Hi, it's Janet Rockware for Moon Cusser Art. We're going to do another geode in resin art, and I hope you enjoy the process. I changed it up a little bit this time, so let's see how this works for me. Here's my board. It's a birch panel, and I've spray painted it black. Can you hear that? It's not smooth. It's just a one coat of spray paint, uh, Rust-Oleum. I think it's the two times acrylic, two times coverage, which I think it means that it has primer in it. Um, anyway, that's what I like to use. And I didn't sand this down because having a little bit of a rough surface, eh, lint in my nail. Um, actually is going to be helpful in making sure I get good adhesion for my resin. So I'm fine with that and the coverage is good. I wanted to show you, I did put my tape on the sides because I like to do clean sides and putting the tape on, uh, again, what I like to do is I do two rows put the lower row on first, then another row, making sure that I'm really careful on my level around the edges. And then I come back with a pencil or a marker and I rub it on really good. I start in the middle and I work my way out and that's called burnishing. And that just warms up the adhesive of the tape a little bit more, the pressure that I'm pushing down. It really makes a nice tight seal. I have never had an issue with resin going underneath my tape when I've been careful about it. If I get a little wobble in my tape, I've had resin get in underneath that. So going down and taking your time, you're gonna get a good um, adhesion of your tape. And this is the, uh, yeah, this is the edge lock um, works really good for me anyway. Uh, there's a lot of different tapes and a lot of people use different ones. This is just the one that has worked well for me. So if it works good, I'm going to keep doing it. You can also see what I did on the back side of my board is I use yogurt cups and, uh, I use them for mixing up my resin. My husband and I both eat yogurt a lot. So I have an abundance of these and uh, they work good as little legs to keep my board off the tabletop surface. I actually uh, make little tape donuts and yep, push it on. They stay and it works good. So that's the prep on my board. And I wanted to show you guys because I'm starting to put down my lines and I realized I wasn't filming that. Um, so I thought I'd show you guys this piece here I made up ahead of time. Um, the hubs got me a whole bunch of crystals for Christmas and these are really big. So you can probably, sorry, tell by my uh, size of my hand that, you know, they're pretty big. And there's one, two, three, four, five quartz pieces. And what I did was I made an arrangement of them and I had them sitting on a smooth surface and I poured resin and got them all stuck together. So what I did was yeah, I just had it sitting down and I really carefully drizzled the resin in. I don't even know how many times. I think I did a total of maybe three times I kept pouring it in. Now, it looks pretty neat and tidy here close to the edge, but let me be honest with you. My pool of resin was probably out to here when everything was said and done. But what I did was I came in with my Dremel tool and I just clean that right up. 
and cut it down. I used like a cutter blade on my Dremel tool and you know, wearing my safety goggles, wearing a dust mask because I don't want to inhale any of the dust particles from the resin. And I just cut it right down in and it's perfectly smooth. And I'm gonna just mount that right onto the board. So I thought about my design on my board for my geode piece and Obviously, this is going to be the main focal, so I wanted to do my placement here, so I kind of outlined where I'm going to do that. And then I just started coming in, drawing lines, um, geode style. So it's, it's going to be hard for you all to see because I'm using pencil on the black, but that's okay. I want it to be subtle. I'll be able to see them, and I'm just, you know kind of just drawing my lines in however I feel like going. And it's, it's good to think, you know, you don't want to be consistent with how you're drawing your lines out. That's, I think, what gives them interest because in nature, a geode, every one is going to be different. So, you know, just let it kind of make its own way. Um, it's the beauty of these pieces. You know, you can, there's no right or wrong and it should be fun. And you know what, I might be drawing these on here and who knows when I'm pouring, it might go differently and that's okay too. You gotta, you know, go with it. And I think it, it makes it a more enjoyable experience if you can let go and kind of see where it takes you. That's, uh, for me, that's one of the things I like about art. So again, I'm just kind of drawing in. Now there I went. I've got a really big gap, but I did that on purpose because I was thinking as I was drawing that that I wanted to bring in another section here, again, to add interest. So I allowed myself to think about it and yeah, it'll, it'll work out good. If, you, if you've done a few of these, you know what I'm talking about. You've, you've mapped these out and you don't even have to map them out either. I like to map them out. I do like to control my uh, pores a little bit more than other people do. Um, I have very <laughs> um, definite ideas of what I want. Doesn't mean I get it, but I got definite ideas. Um, so again, just mapping these in here, having some fun, trying to balance it out. Um, again, I've got that little prong here. So now I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe I need to have a little prong up here. So let's put that in there and, you know, break it up. You don't want it all to be perfect. You want to have variations because in nature, it's, you, if you think about it, there's minerals that are laying down and sediments carried in, and that's how these geodes get formed. So just drawing in, having a good time, and it doesn't take long, and you're done. So that's it. Those are my lines. Let me uh, get you guys off of the, take you down off of here. Let's see if I can't get you closer to see those map lines. There, now you can see them. All right, so that's it. That's my beginning. Um, I've been playing around with some colors for a couple of days. 
Here's a nice close-up of that structure I made. Let me flip over the back so you can see. It's perfectly smooth. Like a baby's bottom. All right. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, I have not done blacks and silvers, so I'm going towards that. All right. Let's pick out those colors. Went over to my shelves and dug around, and I uh, think I'm going to do, definitely want to use that. I think it'll be a nice combination with those quartz crystals there. Um, I also bought this little beauty. I think I bought this maybe two years ago. Some little tiny hole in the wall shop. Uh, just had all kinds of things for the house. But these are uh, glass glitter pieces. And there's not a lot there. And I've been saving them and saving them. And yet yeah, it's time to, time to use them. So they're definitely going in. So that's where I go with picking up some of the real pretty pale, it's a pale, uh, yeah, like a, I guess like a, um, I'll call it a Bimini Caribbean blue, but those two work really nicely together. So um, this I got at Michael's and so they're going to be on there, on the board. Pretty little glass pieces. And because I'm going with the black, I wanted to use silver. So I've got a couple of sil a bright silver and a gunmetal silver. And then just black glitter. I like to use seed beads. Yeah, I got those at Michael's at one of their big sales. So um, those will get tied in. I also have some black fireplace glass, reflective fireplace glass. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these, and I'll tell you why. I really like this glass. It works good, but the reflective part has almost like a gold color on some of it. It's like it wasn't finished off properly. So... Let's see if I can show you the two different tones. Um, I, I don't know what they had going on with this batch, but I don't think it was their best batch I've gotten from them. So if you guys can see the difference, this one has like a silvery finish. And then this one, it's like almost a, a gold color. So that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, because my concern is if there's a flash of gold, that's not going to really go good with the silver. It'll kind of distract from it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I got lots of uh, options. More glitter. This little glitter. You know, I, I pull all these things out because who knows which one... I'm going to use this is a um, embossing powder by Ranger. This one's uh, holographic, so it's a white, and it's got. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has like a um, almost a greenish tint to the sparkle in there. So I, that's why I pulled that one off because I thought, boy, that'll go good with the the greens of that, and. I've got my colors here. I don't have, this is me doing my little puddles. So this is a nice bright silver. Um, if I want to take down the intensity, I'll just add something else to it or I won't mix it up so firm. And, uh, you know, I, I like to tweak my colors as I need them. So I'll do little test pours right on my tabletop. You know, I've got plastic down and I'll pour it on there and see 
how it turns out and uh, if I need to throw something else in there. And then this, look at how pretty that kind of combines. Isn't that nice? So this is a nice transparent, so I thought, oh yeah, that would work good. And I don't have white and I don't have black puddles because, you know, they're white, they're black. I know what it's going to look like. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. And um, got my lines drawn. So I'm going to mix up a batch of resin and uh, start working on this piece. Um, depending on where I pour, I like to put a dam of tape at the edge. And what I do is I put that on there where I'm going to pour to and I let it sit up for about an hour and I take that tape off and then I hit it with the heat gun to get a nice rolled over edge. And uh, that works really good for me. So um, you'll see me doing that. Um, that's it for now. And let me go mix up my resin. Well, it's a woman's prerogative and I am exercising it. I decided that some of my colors were not going to show up good against a black base background. So this is me in time lapse painting with white acrylic and I'm just laying down a nice white base to hopefully get those items to pop on the canvas. So I'm going to be pouring a little bit of resin. I'm putting on some tape dams where I know the resin is going to get right to the edge and that holds it on top of the board. I remove that tape after about an hour and that way it keeps it on top of the board instead of flowing off. Now before I did paint on those white areas and it's important to know that I allowed that white acrylic paint to dry completely. I have the heat on down in the basement and I gave it 48 hours to dry. So I'm sure that it's not going to give me any issues. So I'm just laying in this Caribbean blue color and filling it in. I put down my glue lines as an outline to create a dam and hold it into place. And I'm also going to put a little bit of clear resin on the bottom of my quartz structure that I created and it's going to fit into its space and hold it onto the board. Just for now, it's a good start. Okay, I'm super excited. I'm using my special super duper glass glitter that I bought. Uh, it's so pretty. I just love it. Anyway, so I'm just sprinkling that right on top of the wet resin. And I'm trying to really go heavy-handed here because I want it to stand out. Um, like I said, I've been saving this for a while. Now, it's important to know with glass glitter, it can sink in your resin. So I did give the resin maybe 15 minutes to kind of sit and cure just a little bit. And now I'm sprinkling this glass glitter back on top. The glass glitter has weight to it. So that could bring it down through your resin. It can um, almost disappear. So anyway, I put it in a paper cup, pinch the cup so that I get like a little spout, and that helps me control where I'm dropping my super duper Caribbean green and blue glass glitter right into that resin. And like I said, going real heavy because I really want to draw the eye to this spot. So let's get that done. And that's going to be it for today. The resin has cured overnight. And that Caribbean blue-green with the glass glitter is all set up. So now I'm working in with about 13 ounces of resin. I'm doing a lot of detail work around the crystals and around that green-blue. Um, 
So I knew it was going to take some time for me to work the resin in. I only batched the 13 ounces. It's only going to cover about half of the board. The board is a 16 by 20. So I wanted to really give some time working in these areas. If you have too much resin on the board, it can be a lot to try to get it all done in one shot. And I'm giving myself a little bit of a cushion. I've got a white, a black, I've got that silver. And I also mixed up a uh, turquoise blue. Now the turquoise blue is a little bit on the dark side. It almost looks black here in the film. But when I start using the heat gun and blowing it into that Caribbean blue-green or into the white, that's when that teal turquoise color really starts shining on its own. So I'm just going to keep putting these bands down and working it with the heat gun and uh, blowing it to get some details coming out of the resin. The torch helps to heat it up and let it flow a little bit more. And then coming in and blowing it with the heat gun really drives the resin into the other colors. All right, so almost finished with the first batch of resin that I've got. Just adding a little bit more detail here with some white. And again, pushing, got that blade drive on the heat gun. And we're going to batch up some more resin. Okay, another 13 ounces and just going to keep laying down those lines trying to get some black right up to the black. It took me oh, maybe five minutes to batch up another 13 ounces and get it all tinted. So it worked out good that I ended with the black because the fresh pour and the one that was already on the board will blend well with each other and you won't even be able to see any kind of matching up problems. So again, just building those bands on here, uh, putting down a line of silver right up against that black. It's going to really travel nicely and hopefully give me some pretty details, some uh, feathering of the colors together once I put the heat gun and the torch on them. All right, so I'm just laying out that silver band there and going to keep on coming in and laying out those bands of colors as I have mapped out on my board. I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to try to uh, put some little pearls of wisdom in my videos as I go through. I want to talk about the different resins that are out there. Now, I've been doing resin pours for hmm, two years, a little longer than two years now, and I've tested a couple of different resins. They all have different qualities to them. Some smell worse than others. Some have more work time than others. Um, all kinds of variables to them. Uh, you should be using safety precautions. Get yourself a good mask. I would recommend getting one that covers your eyes as well as your nose and mouth. Um, some people have some very allergic reactions to working with resin. Make sure you wear uh, good gloves. Um, nitrile gloves are the best. They're going to help you avoid any kind of exposure to the resin. Uh, I've been really good about once I take my gloves off, if I see something in the resin or whatever, if I know I'm even just going to pick up a cup, I put something between me and that resin. Always protect yourself. Like I said, I've known a lot of people that have had allergic reactions. And one of the things with resin also is that it builds up in your system. So you might not have an allergic reaction today, but you might tomorrow. Um, so join some Facebook groups if you're already in Facebook. Go search them out. There's quite a few out there, and there's a lot of helpful information there. Um, 
And again, you're working with, uh, you know, chemicals here. So take, take the time to protect yourself and be careful. So these bands are going down great. And I'm just going to keep laying those out. And I'm going to turn on some music. And you can watch as I finish doing these bands here on this layer. Well, it's been 48 hours since the last pour. You know, life gets in the way and you don't get right back to something. I'm just adding a little bit more detail, putting a little more sparkle on a few spots, uh, a little bit of that glass glitter to get a little more bling going on. And I'm also laying down the glass that I wanted to use on these bands. Uh, it's a little bit different process from what I normally do. So usually I'm putting that glass right in a wet band, but this time what I did was I poured the band, I'm dry laying the glass on and positioning it where I want, and then I'm going back over top and I'm pouring a clear layer of resin across those glass beads to get them to adhere to the board. And this worked really good. It also shortened my time for processing the piece, so I was real happy with how that worked out. I had poured the Caribbean blue glass and coated it with the clear coat in the morning, and it was set up enough with the cure time on the resin that I was able to come back in the afternoon and I didn't film it because I hand laid out all that black glass. Remember in the beginning I said that there was some differences in the reflective color of that black glass and it really was bothering me but I wanted to use it so I had to take my time and pick out my pieces and really lay them in nicely to avoid getting that gold reflection which was not going to go with the silver tones. So I got that all set, clear coated it, and it was good. Well with doing all these pours and building up the layers with the glass and the glitter, I ended up with a really thick edge and it was bothering me. So I took it outside, got my handy dandy Dremel, put on my gloves, put on my coat, put on my mask, and I took down that edge just a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that this way when I do my final clear coat, I'll get a nice round over. Well, let me tell you. Dremeling off and creating the dust and having that all settled into the exposed crushed glass. Oh my gosh! What a problem. I ended up having to bring my compressor outside and blow off the dust. And man, I took a paintbrush, I cleaned it, and it was a pain in the neck. So I don't know that I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just adding some more detail here. I'm pouring some bands of glitter to really get that sparkle going and laying those out. 
and then I'm going to do a clear coat. Um, boy, I don't know. This one, I you know, life got in my way a little bit, um, but it's wrapping up, and uh, this should be over as soon as possible. I hope you guys are hanging in there with me. It's been stressful on this one, but the rewards, I'm sure, are going to be good. Hi, good morning. It's uh, time to finish up this geode. Uh, it's been a little bit different style. I went with uh, doing massive pours. Um, I'm really happy with the... We've got some really pretty quartz crystals there. I'm liking those. Hoping I can get them all on the camera for you guys to see. And so now I'm going to be clear coating the whole thing today. But first I wanted to put on some of my lines. And I'm going to get some detail on here. So let's get going with that. I'm going to start with my craft smart marker. This is just a black medium line. Let me tilt this camera down here. Try to get you guys a really good view. Got a few camera angles going on. Oh, you can see my drips on that camera. Uh, but that's okay. I got that tape edge on there. So let's get going on drawing some lines in. Okay, the lines are finished and I'm applying a tape dam all the way around the edge because I'm going to do my final flood coat over the whole surface. So I'm focusing on those bands of glass because they're relatively high to the rest of the piece. I want to make sure I get good coverage on that. And then I'm going to go in and fine tune it a little bit of paper cup pouring and using my gloved hand and a popsicle stick to really work it in the areas that are difficult. Then I'm going to come through with the heat gun and I'm going to remove any bubbles and uh, I'll be back in an hour and take that tape off. Okay, I did my uh, unwrapping this morning and took off the dust cover and you can see how shiny and smooth that is and pretty. This looks so good. I'm trying to get some good angles on that there. There's a good one. Look at that. It is beautiful guys. Beautiful. The colors just go so nicely together. I'm so so thrilled. Really fun. Okay. Let's, uh, I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to film it because I don't think I've had it before. Ooh, look at that pretty little spot. Look at how the iridescent turns green in there. Isn't that pretty? Nice. Okay, so I'm going to film the taking off the tape on the sides because this is, uh, 
how we get clean sides on the pieces. And you can see that last night, after I put that flood coat on, it really, you know, when I removed the tape dam, it really flooded over. So let's get that off of there. Okay, I used my heat gun to accomplish this. It warms up the sides and it just makes it that much easier getting that tape off. Now, the only thing I have to do is find out where did I start? Uh, yeah. Where did I start? Ah, over here. Okay. So, somewhere in this vicinity, there's a little peak. It's like a little strip tease, a teaser. All right, you're gonna get put on mute because the heat gun is gonna make lots of noise and I'm not gonna subject you guys to that. So let's roll this. When using the heat gun, keep the heat gun moving. That's gonna keep you from scorching the painted sides or the tape. You want to avoid that. Don't burn yourself either. Those heat guns are hot. So when I did my sanding, you can see I was a little aggressive and I actually damaged my tape edge. It's all right. I'm not worried about it. I'll get that all cleaned up. Um, my sides are really pretty much clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a 400 grit sandpaper. I'm going to hand sand that, just scuff it up to take anything off there a little bit. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to protect my top surface and I'm going to hit it with a little bit more spray paint to get that all cleaned up again. All right, I've got those sides cleaned up and touched up and it's a beautiful sunny day here in the Northeast. And what do you think? That cluster of quartz crystals really dominates the piece. It's a large section and it is beautiful. The glitter sparkles, the glass sparkles, and the colors go so well together. I'm glad I tried a new process. I had a little bit of issue with the sanding in there, but hey, you got to try something new. You never know if it's going to work better. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed seeing my process. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next time on Mooncusser Art.